Hey guys, I'm just going to make a quick video to show you how you can reuse and recycle the PSU from your Razer Core X V1, the Thunderbolt 3 or 4 version, and not have to buy a new PSU for your Razer Core X V2, which is Thunderbolt 5. And you can use it. You can reuse the PSU. It's a 700 watt PSU and you can save yourself like 100 bucks or however much you were going to spend on a PSU and it is possible to migrate it but it does have a little bit of a modification, a couple of holes you have to drill. So that's what I'm gonna show you in this video, is exactly where to drill the holes and the process that I went through. All right, so I'm making this video to show how I migrated the power supply from my Razer Core X1, Thunderbolt 3 slash 4, into my new Razer Core X V2 case, because as you all know, it does not come with a power supply. But if you're like me and you, there's a fair chance that you already had a Razer eGPU. And so um, I had to disassemble the whole thing. There's a bunch of um, proprietary type screws. So I recommend you get something like this, like a little mini screwdriver set and this, I don't know what this is called, like a torque bit or something. It's got six points, but this was a very common bit to use um, in disassembling the power supply, which I have now placed over here in the new unit. And the thing about this is that um, there's a bunch of brackets, like here, this bracket connected the power supply to the old case like this, um, it was something like this. It was over here. And so it was necessary to take this bracket off. It was also necessary to take off an entire um, section below. There was a big long bracket here that was connecting um, in a panel where the PSU was attached. So I had to take off two screws up here. I think it was one, two, three, four, five screws down here. And this is the panel I'm referring to. Um, hold on, there's a, a fan stuck in it. Get that out. So the first step is just to disconnect everything. Second step is to unscrew everything. And this panel, or whatever you want to call this, this giant bracket, is what holds the fan, but it also holds, I think it was like this. It also holds the PSU. So you have to take off from down in here you have to take out these five screws. So these two, these five, and I think that was it. And um, there's a weird design to the power supply where it sticks out. You'll see this when you do this. It sticks out the back so that you can reach your power supply cable. And that's this part right here. So that's the only funny thing about this is this sticks out now. And the only modification necessary to do this, where you're reusing this power supply, and by the way, it's a 700 watt, at least the one I got in my um, Razer Core X1, was a 700 watt power supply, which is more than enough for most GPUs because you're not running a CPU off of this. It's just running the GPU. And most graphics card power estimates are incorporating the CPU power as well because you typically run your video card in the same system as your processor. In this case, the PSU is only powering the video card. So 700 watts is overkill for most video cards, unless maybe it's the most up-to-date latest video card. I have a, a 4070 Ti, an RTX 4070 Ti, and this is more than enough. And I've been running it for at least a year using this PSU. It's been fine. So once you complete the removal step, you take out the power supply, then the second step is to put it into the case of the new eGPU, which is the Thunderbolt 5 Razer Core X V2. And the Razer Core X V2 case only accepts a ATX style power supply. It does not, at least per Grok, does not accept a uh, what do you call it? Small form factor power supply. It won't fit in this case unless you have the right brackets. But in this case, I'm using the standard PSU that came with 
this Core X one that everybody's got. So if you have the standard PSU, then you can do this because I just did it. And so once you, you've disconnected it there, really all that you have to do is drill three holes on the back of this. And the only tricky part of it is the placement of the holes. So I drilled this hole in the back of the case so that this little screw that I took from the old unit would um, hold the, the power supply in place. So I drilled that hole, and then I drilled down here that hole, and then this hole right in the side, which is basically open to this, this um, gap, but it's at least, um, it holds it in a little better. These two are the only two that are fully holding in the power supply from all directions. This one's kind of floating, but it's holding it up to the top part of this bracket. Let's see if I can zoom in there so you can see what I'm talking about. See how it's not actually surrounded by metal, it's just kind of touching the lip of the metal right above it. But that's good because it's directionally holding it in from that direction. And the um, you can't see the hole I drilled here because there's a screw now, but there's a little eighth inch hole. All these are eighth inch holes there now. And, um, and there's a screw there, so holding it in from like three of the four sides. It's open on the inside, but it's holding it, you know, pretty well actually. And it doesn't take much screwing because these are not deep screws. But these two here, let me zoom out again. In the bottom right and the top right are the two that are fully uh, from every direction. You know, it's like a hole encompassed by metal, all directions. And so it's holding in a fully. So I don't know if I did a good job of explaining that, but that's how it's being held in. And the only tricky part is to, is how to measure the distance of these holes. And the best tip I can give you is, um, let's see, I'll use this as a pointer. Um, so this hole horizontally lines up with this hole. So you know that, like you take the two axes, you have the X axis and the Y axis. And on the X axis, it's the same height as this one. So visually, you know, like it's just under the lip of this metal, and that's how you can kind of um, aim your drill bit. And then as far as how far over, um, I sort of lifted the PSU up and looked kind of down this way to kind of eyeball it. And you can tell, like you, gauge like a, a marker, like get, get um, a um, relative location point, like, See these little um, hex shapes? The point on the top seems to line up with the hole. So you can kind of visually kind of guide it that way. Basically just get your bearings. Get your bearings, however you do it. Um, I used, like I said, the horizontal of this and the top of the point of these hex, the rightmost hex on this power supply and kind of where those lines intersect is where I drilled the hole. And you can see I was even off slightly. So I used the drill bit. Um, I was just using this like Ryobi. Again, this is, I'm gonna verify, this is an eighth inch. I think this is an eighth inch, let's see. Yes, so I was using the eighth inch drill bit in the Ryobi here and um, cordless. And you can see that I, I was kind of off by a little bit. You have to be pretty accurate. And that is the correct drill bit size, it's just, just big enough to fit the screws through, but enough for the head to bite on this case to hold it in. But then I, so I would, <laughs> to move the hole up, I basically stuck the drill in and ran it like while it's through the hole and pushed up on the drill. I know that's not the intended purpose of a drill and kind of wiggled it. And I was able to kind of carve my way up uh, to make up the millimeter or two difference where I was off initially. Um, my bottom one was more spot on luckily, so that was good. Um, there is a USB port down here, so don't go drilling, you know, stabbing things through or, or misfire and accidentally drill into this. But you have some clearance if you look on the inside. You're not going to accidentally do that um, unless you're really careless. So, um, and then as far as the alignment on this bottom one, here's the thing I found on this bottom one. Let me get another pointer here. Um, this, so see this hole right here? You can't use it for anything except it is the center of this hole. It's kind of elongated, but the center of it is the same horizontal as this, um, the hole that you need for this bit. Maybe it's even slightly on the top end of this circle. He's, basically, I used that as my alignment for that. And then um, 
yeah. And then again, I, I would push the PSU out and look down, down this way to kind of see where the hole was. But you can see it's, it's almost lined up perfectly. It's kind of like, um, like this, where it's touching the edge. Like if you can imagine a line going straight down, if the screw was to touch the edge of this, straight down to here. And so align it with this horizontally and this edge vertically. You're not starting the drill bit there, you're starting it kind of in a little bit so that it would be pinching on the edge of this, this line. So that's the hardest part. And so once you've finished drilling those three holes, one, two, and three, and I, you could say that this one's optional, but I just like the idea that it's being held in because they're not super deep, um, deep screws, but it's in now. So now I've got the Razor Core X1 PSU inside my Razor Core X V2, ready to power my Thunderbolt 5 or my, my GPU via the Thunderbolt 5. And I didn't have to buy an additional power supply. So I saved 120 bucks. I was gonna buy, you know, like this Corsair 700, 750 watt PSU from Amazon for like 120 bucks. And um, so I don't have to do that now. And I know that this works with my video card already because I've already been running it. This is my GeForce 470 Ti Eagle and it's been running just great. Um, so there you go. And the resale value on these cases is not much. I think it's like 80 bucks, 100 bucks on eBay. It's basically not worth it to sell this. It's actually more worth it to salvage and transfer the PSU because you're gonna, like I said, the, the PSU is gonna cost me 120. And I was, I'd, if I was to sell this, I'd only get 80 or 100. So it doesn't really make sense to go through the trouble of selling it when you can just salvage the part and save the money. So then your um, eGPU is basically just the cost of the eGPU because you're migrating something that you already had. Okay, so now my next step is to plug in the video card and, and away we go. Hope this was helpful. It's a really simple mod, really simple modification and just to save some, save some bucks. All right, and this is the final product. I have just installed the video card. You can see that it fits. Um, not much clearance, but that's the same amount of clearance as was on the other uh, core one because they had this circuit board that was right up against that slot, which was the circuit board that would give you those extra USB ports on the core one, the core X one, but on the core X two, you don't have that, but it's the same amount of clearance. So this is now happily seated and it's ready to be turned on. So wish me luck.